Well folks, welcome aboard. I'm back out on the boat as such. I'm uh, back on the pontoon. I've done all the maintenance, so I'm back on board. So today, I thought I'd talk about some of the tools of the trade, as they say. The sort of tools that you use whilst fishing, beach fishing, boat fishing, whatever you uh, enjoy. Probably for beginners, uh, for this video, there's probably plenty of anglers out there who know all the tools I'm going to talk about. Seen them, got them, got multitudes of different types and styles. But I thought I'd do this video just to explain some of the ones I've got and uh, how I use them and and there go from there really. So uh, let's start. Let's start. So probably to start off with lows and lows and different types of different disgorgers uh, available. So there's three there. Got your plastic one, which I generally take for me beach fishing. It's got a little, comes with it, a little clip, it's handy. Um, yeah, so that's the style. T-bars they're called, by the way, um, should say that. That's a sort of a medium-sized sort of T-bar for sort of uh, lightest sort of fish, sort of like your dogfish, pout, whiting, um, probably sort of smaller rays, really, uh, bass, anything like that. And then you've got to the larger... Uh, T bar. Um, you'll probably notice that it's got the round hook on the end, and this one's got the other reverse hook as well, sort of thing. So I'll quickly show you that. So let's get a hook. Let's find one. There's one. Bit of white braid. So if you imagine that there is the hook, the fish's mouth is rounded like that. So it's a question of slipping it over the line and bringing it down and then doing the action like that. And it's all in one action. If you try and lift this up, we're not lifting this as well, pulling this one down, it, it goes like that and it, it gets all real messy. So it, it takes a bit of time and patience, I'm afraid, of uh, getting it to work properly and helping you out. I've seen many of people over the years fiddling around and trying to work it out it just takes time and practice but you will get there it's just a question of together like that and the hook will be released also as i said got that one there so again you can use the pushing action so like if you've got big eels let's get that locked in there we go you've got big eels you can push the hook out like so so real good tea bar that is for the bigger fish for the lighter fish, so real light fish, so your flounders, your place, that sort of thing, you got these style of disgorges. So, uh, yeah, stainless steel, you work a treat, especially good for getting hooks out of flounders and place and the flatter fish, really. The old uh, forceps, work a treat. You can get the sort of bent up sort of style, which sometimes help as well, but mine are the flat style. So, yep, yeah, work for me. Now, there's another style um, for disgorging. Typically, you see those with the freshwater boys. They use that sort of style, but obviously a lot smaller. Um, again, good for sort of using for flatfish and the like, the, the bigger sort of flatfish, really. Um, so, yeah, different style, different style. Again, it's just a matter of slipping it over and pushing the hook out. So... Yep, don't often see them around actually that big to be fair, but you certainly do for the freshwater style. Now, for cutting tools, for cutting lines and uh, sort of cutting bait, a good stainless steel pair of scissors are always very good. I've got no short ones, these are. Good stainless steel, great for cutting braid and uh, nylon. Um, you do get a bit of rust with them, there's no doubt about it. Even though they're stainless steel and they're not the highest grade of stainless steel, so you will get a bit of rust, so you just got to give them a clean every now and again. But they work a treat, always worth having a pair of those. Cut line, cut bait, whatever you may do. The other thing I'll sort of show you is, well, everyone needs a pair of the old uh, toenail clippers, if you like. Particularly good for nylon line. Not so great with the braid, unless they're really super sharp. Um, and uh, but I've got them, I'll use them now. This tool here, now I just stumbled across this tool at a tackle shop. I was after uh, something else actually, but I found this. So, 
this tool here is designed for splitting um, rings, you know, for putting around your spoons and all that rest of it sort of thing. So you've got the, the very top there, you've got like the, the sort of uh, teeth, if you like, which goes into the split ring and it pulls the split ring apart. So it saves your nails. Don't want to break your nails now, do you? Use them. They're the things to use. It splits the ring, you put your spoon on and uh, yeah, work an absolute treat. But also these things are absolutely fantastic for cutting braid. There's a cutting tool just there. And it literally cut and it's away. Brilliant for cutting braid they are. Also as well, these this tool, good for gripping around the hook and tightening up your line knots. So you're putting your fingers and thumbs all around them, grip it like that and grip it and give it the old tug. A real good multi-tool that one. I always take those with me. I've got one for the boat and I've got one for the shore. Hence this is my shore one, got the old tag on, works a treat. And uh, yeah, so you, you see them on uh, eBay and, and uh, you'll see them in some tackle shops. Um, I can't remember the brand, but yeah, made of stainless steel, works a treat. The rig making sort of stuff. A pair of these. The old, good old crimping tool. It's designed for different types of crimps. You've got different styles for, uh, well, different uh, well, I don't know, styles, or I suppose depths of crimp you can put in there, I should say. Um, great for crimping down. Um, yeah, you can use pliers, but sometimes you can go a bit mad with pliers and, and you end up squashing the line that you're crimping uh, with and then you're making it weaker. So a pair of those, really good for making uh, rigs up with and uh, crimping those crimps up. And not, last but not least for the tools what I use, the good old cotton. Um, I'll use one of these, the old uh, Innova cotton dispenser. I absolutely love these, they're brilliant. You know, when you've got your hands full of bait and mess and muck, all you've got to do after the end of the season, well, end of the day, sorry, not season, just give it a quick wash off and it's good as gold. It keeps the cotton nice and clean as well. You just pull it out like that. Absolutely brilliant, I really do like these. I'm not one for just having the cotton reel on itself and winding it around and it's just caked in crap, basically, sort of thing, and it stinks and it's horrible. So there's a few of the tools that I take out fishing with me, whether it's beach or boat, they certainly help me out, that's for sure. But there's one important thing that you cannot leave home for, with. And that is that. Do not leave home with one of those, because you will pay for it at some point. Everyone knows, as soon as you get somewhere, you need one of those. And what happens when you see the old public toilet? None of that. So a must, always take this with you. If anything, take that and none of that. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. That's a little bit what I do in the way of tools I use for beach and boat, as I said. Hopefully that helps some of you uh, new sort of starters out there um, get some kit together and make your life a little bit easier and make fishing a lot more enjoyable. Tight lines, everyone. Hope you enjoyed. Hope it helps you out. Don't forget to give me that old thumbs up. You know, and give me some comments. Tell me what you're thinking. The good, the bad, the ugly. I'm not bothered. But I will give you some feedback back if you come up with some comments or you want questions answered. And uh, more importantly, don't forget to subscribe.